Okay, what is the complex conjugate? S something like an inverse, something like a, like a, yeah, like an inverse. Every complex number is what we call the conjugate. So for a complex number z, the conjugate we would write it as like that, z and a dash above of it. Now, right now we will show you the algebraic aspect, but later you will get a more geometric feel towards it. So the complex conjugate of z is equal to simply a minus b i, which is the imaginary part. Just take away, instead of plus, you just take away, and that will give you the complex conjugate. And it follows on smoothly, so to speak, on a few rules about the complex conjugate. And that is this. You take the conjugate of z and you take the conjugate of that, you get the same number. The other one is z plus w. z plus w, you take the conjugate, is the same as z conjugate plus w conjugate. Okay. The other one is that when you multiply, is the same as z conjugate multiplied by w conjugate. And last but not least, if, that, if it's 1 over z, and you take the conjugate of that, is equal to 1 over z the conjugate. Okay, here's a few rules of the conjugate of z. And it's all this over here. Now, if you want to take the time to really show each one of them, you can just simply substitute this one inside here, respectively, and do it each of the, each of the components. But I'm not going to spend time on that. If you want to do that, you can. So this is what we mean by the conjugate. And last thing to take note of, z is equal to the conjugate if the imaginary part is equal to zero. So if z is real. Okay, this is one thing that you should note of because if z is real, that means the imaginary part is not there. When you take the conjugate, there's nothing for you to change the sign. So this is what we have, the conjugate of z. Like I said, all these results are in the page, so you can go refer to them, but I'm going to move quickly along to now what we call the magnitude. Okay, right now there is no geometric representation of a complex number. Later when we move into a plane, which will be very soon, you kind of understand further what all these concepts mean. But for each complex number, there's a real part, there's an imaginary part, and there's also what we like to call the magnitude, which is defined as equals to the square root a squared plus b squared. There we go. That's what we call the magnitude. We are right now, if you want to think about it, you can think about it in a sense of vectors. A goes like that, B I goes like that. And then the magnitude is simply the, the, square, the square root of A squared plus B squared over here. The real part and the imaginary part of the number, the complex number Z. So that is what we call as the magnitude. And it's also important to note that this is equal to Z times the conjugate of Z and you take the square root like this. Okay? This is just a result that, that you have. However, it's vitally important that you should know z squared does not equal to the conjugate of z squared. Okay? Now, let's look at it carefully. Because z squared, z starts off as a complex number. If you take the square of that, it's z times z. And as I showed you just now, it's that long thing there where you need to work out the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. However, on the other side, the magnitude of z is a real number, as we can see over here. It's a real number, and then when we square a real number, we get a real number. Not, and it, not a complex number, whereas on this side, we will get a complex number if we times z by itself. If we take the magnitude, it becomes a real number, and when we square that, we get a real number. So uh, certainly a complex number does not equal to a real number. So this is important to note, that z squared does not equal its magnitude squared. And from here, or not, sorry, not from here, we are talking about magnitude, we got what we call the famous triangle inequality, which goes like that. z plus w, you take the magnitude, is less than or equal to the magnitude of z plus the magnitude of w, where z and w are both complex numbers. I won't show this now because honestly I don't really know how to show it. I know that the tri tri uh, triangle inequality exists in quite a few fields of mathematics and complex numbers being one of them. So once I find the proof, I'll post it up separately and show it to you. Okay? And finally, moving on in the lines of the conjugate, okay? 
we would show you a way of rationalizing the denominator and then we'll just sum up as that. All the results you can read on the page. Now, we've got something like this. Okay, moving back to real numbers now. Real numbers 1 over root 3 plus 1 over root 2. Okay, now that number is fine, though it's a bit messy and we always like to rationalize the denominator. Try to put uh, the denominator as a whole number. And then any, any square roots we can put at the top. So what we normally do is that we times this is now we times it by another number whose denominator is root 3 minus root 2. And we need to put the same thing on top so that we are time what multiplying by 1. So at least the number stays the same. But the reason why we choose this is because when this times with this, we get a whole number. When this times with this, we get a whole number. However, the roots would minus off each other because when we times this by this, it's plus root 3 times root 2. And we multiply this by this, it's root 3, um, root 3 times root 2 minus root 3 times root 2. So we eliminate the roots and it becomes on the top. So it's root 3 minus root 2. This, this one, I can this times with this and this times with this, it becomes 3 minus 2, which is equals to root 3 Sorry, yeah, sorry, this, the top is different. My mistake. Okay, we also need to multiply. Yeah, sorry, okay. This the top is like that. Root 3 minus root 2. The bottom is, this times this is 3, and this times this is 2, and then you minus. It's plus root 3 times root 2 minus root 3 times root 2, so that one goes away, and this is equal to root 3 minus root 2. Okay, and that is what we like to call rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so adopting this principle for complex numbers, we will do something like this. 1 over a plus bi. Okay, now this looks a bit intimidating to kind of manipulate. So we want to rationalize this by putting a real number and if possible a whole number at the bottom and a complex number on the top. So what we do is a plus bi similarly times by a minus b i and we must write the same at the top so that they are equal to 1 and we don't change the original value and this is equal to a minus b i at the top and what do we have here a times a a squared okay a times b i is plus a times b i a times minus b i is minus a times b i so they want to eliminate each other now we, be, we must be a bit careful here because b times b is b squared B is minus b times minus b squared is minus b squared, but i times i is minus 1. So minus times minus, you get a plus. So now this becomes a plus b squared here. And that is what we got when we mean by rationalizing the denominator. The complex number now goes to the top, and at the bottom is a whole number. That looks rather nice. And we just extend this one bit by going like that. 1 equals to z over here which is equal to here, okay? And then we can also write that this is equal to the magnitude of z squared, as you can see, and this is equal to z conjugate. Why? Because magnitude of z is square root of this. So basically, there's no square root because we squared it, so we're going to square that. And then a minus bi is the conjugate of z, as we have started out with which gives us another useful result, which is this. Okay, and there we go. Complex numbers 101. Okay, a lot of definitions, most of them on the page. This is talking about rationalizing the denominator over here. And we'll move on to graphical representations of a complex number in the next section. So stay tuned.